Jeez, man. Come on. Makeup. Get on with it, you great punts. You don't need no makeup. You look like Frankenstein anyway. Charman. Charman, man. Oh, yeah. Hey. Hi, people. Hi. 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 Yeah. Welcome to the first, the first, the pilot episode of Luthier's Lair Live. Yes, and I'm very excited about this. Really am. Um, it's going to be fun. Uh, ignore that because I was just trying out a new haircut. Um, yeah. 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 I do have haircuts. And, uh, Actually, this this pilot episode is a little dip into the waters for me. I have never done a, a structured live content. I've always you know, tapped on the phone and went, go live, and went, hello, you know, and been an absolute <laughs> fanny, actually. Um, but this time, it's for real. I'm going to try something. I'm going to try and do something entertaining, trying to do something productive, educational, something that will uh, create value for the community of bass players and luthiers alike. And uh, not just luthiers, uh, well, uh, bass players, luthiers in general, guitar making in general. So let's go and try and uh, do something about that. Now, my name is Gary Denyer, as you probably know. If you don't know, well, that's what it is. I didn't choose it. Somebody chose it for me. Don't, don't you ever find that? No. Somebody chose your name for you. Well, labels are labels. People are people, right? So, um, sorry about that. I just had to get a haircut. And, uh, you know, my channel is all about, really all about bass guitar. You know, uh, bass guitar playing, making, more making than playing now. I did play for a long time, a long time. Actually, I've been playing for 40 years. You wouldn't think it, would you? <laughs> you wouldn't think it. Uh, well, actually, you would, you know, totally would. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't care. care. That's good sound effects, that, eh? I'm, I'm trying to be seamless about this, that, uh, you know, this is the first time me being live um, in a structured fashion. And uh, being seamless with all the equipment I have is kind of hard, because I can't multitask very well, you know. Um, anyway, let's leave that alone, shall we? And uh, we'll go on to the meaning of my channel is... Look, I've been on YouTube for, well, 16 years. Uh, I had uh, videos out there in 2006, believe it or not. And uh, those videos were made by, uh, with the use, the cunning use of a potato. And, um, <laughs> yeah, well, it looks like they were made by a potato. But that was the stage of the technology of that time. And things have progressed, and we can communicate much better online. Uh, sometimes to good, sometimes to bad. Depends what your philosophy is there. But we can communicate. And a great way of communicating is this forum. And it's, it's not too difficult to set yourself up with this sort of stuff. You just have to, you know, stick with it and go with it and see what happens. My channel... Like I said, let's stop digressing here. My God. Yeah, calm down. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit nervous. It's like being on stage for the first time, you know. Oh, 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 oh. But uh, yeah, my forum basically is uh, making basses now. I used to play them a lot. I still do play, and I'm going to demonstrate... Uh, 
maybe one or two models of mine later on in this uh, Dare I Say podcast or Dare I Say live stream. You choose. I'm seeing uh, David Milne is joining us. Hi, David. Thank you. Thanks for joining the podcast. See, I'm having to multitask here and look at the chat and everything, and I was like, uh, it really does my head in. But, you know, I'll get used to it. I'll hopefully get used to it. Uh, there's a bit too much flange on my voice, don't you think? Anyway, is everything coming across okay to all the viewers there? Uh, it sounds okay. There's no technical issues with the stream, excess buffering, stuff like that. Just let me know in the chat and we'll get to it in about a year, you know. So, yeah, let's get back to it. The channel was mainly bass playing and just demonstrations of certain techniques. Then it evolved once, uh, after like a, a while, um, I got into making guitars and basses in general, repairing guitars, stuff like that. That's been going on for 20 years now. And uh, I have my own brand out there and I have a few customers out there. Um, maybe about 100 or something. Um, mostly local, but some overseas, who I'm very grateful for. And I would like to give a great big shout out to a very dear friend of mine. Um, his name is Franco Di Donato. Yes. Italian bass player, very famous over in Italy. And he is a premier bass player and composer, multi-talented musician. Does all his arrangements, everything. And uh, shout out to Franco. Uh, his father, sadly, uh, got ill today. And he is actually managing to get back out on the road again. Speaking of which, Mr. Nick Smith. I want to give a great big shout out to Nick Smith. Yeah, Nick Smith, Dr. Bass. Um, back in the 90s, actually, when MP3s were a thing. When they were a thing, they just happened. Uh, myself and Nick put a few MP3s up of the JD bass. I do have a JD right there. See, see, JD Supernatural Classic. I'll be introducing that to you later on. And uh, we had a ball with that stuff. And it was uh, it was the age of geocities.com. Remember that? The Yahoo thing, the geocities thing? Oh, my God. Showing me age now, man. Yeah. So, um, ah, cool. Thanks, David. Thanks for the feedback. Crystal clear sound and vision. Awesome. I'm very glad of that. I just bought this um, MV7X. X means the XLR. And uh, it, it's tremendous. It blocks out everything. Because I'm in an open plan house. My studio is open plan. You know. So I can get any noise. So if you see cats wandering about in the background. Hey. <laughs> it's no problem. <laughs> you know. The cats... Do what they do. They have the free roam of the house, everything. So it's cool. Yeah. So through the ages of my channel, uh, I've got to the stage where I'm shown mainly a lot of work on uh, building bass guitars from scratch and sometimes repair videos, set up videos, stuff like that. However, I don't do teaching. I have had a lot of requests. Uh, do you teach bass? Do you teach bass? I have the perfect solution for you. If you want to learn bass, if you want to uh, really get into the nitty-gritty of bass, it depends what level you are. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No. I know just the very fellow for you guys. Uh, his name is Scott Whitley. Scott was... Uh, is an ex-bass player of Big Country. Remember Big Country? I do. Yes. I was actually um, privileged to actually be a part of one of their um, concerts way back in the day, 1988, actually. 
at the Edinburgh Students Union. Um, there's a few people out there, George Murray, Gavin Duffy, uh, band members that will vouch for that. And we had a blast. And I knew Stuart Adamson and uh, Tony Butler. And these guys, they were, well, I said hi to them, right? <laughs> yeah, we were overawed by them, but we had a great, we had a blast, and uh, that was the Edinburgh Student Union gig, the biggest gig I ever played in, it was about 2,000 people there, um, it was fantastic, but back to Scott, Scott Whitley, Bass Lessons, now I'm going to show you his um, YouTube channel, it was right here, there's the man himself, this man has given away so much to the community. He is a fantastic guy. He is the most personable, amenable, happy, and astute teachers on the planet for bass guitar. If you want any lessons or any tuition or any advice or anything regarding bass guitar lessons, you go to this guy. This is the guy to go to. Like I said, I mean, in the early 2000s, uh, in fact, in the year 2000, I think. In the year 2000. <laughs> yes. I created a DVD set on slap bass and stuff, and I was uh, I sold about a thousand of them, actually. It was, it was quite good. That all went away, though. No retirement for me, right? And, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, this is the guy to get in, in touch with for all your base needs. If you need to improve certain things, Scott can take you from beginner to intermediate to advanced to master class. This guy has so much talent. It's just, uh, it's actually incomprehensible to me. His timing especially I love I mean having watched him having been part of his live stream on Facebook and YouTube and uh, you know contributing some stuff to that just in, in the way of comments nothing else um, we've gotten to know each other quite well and he's the best if you want anything to do with bass go to Scott speaking of Scott Yes. Speaking of Scott, I'll tell you something else. Here's somebody else you should be watching out for. This is probably the most talented couple I know. It's Scott and Janet Whitley. Janet. Yep. She is awesome too. And I just want to give a shout out to these people because they are trying their best to make their dream come true, and they, sh they they deserve every, every piece of support we can give them. I can't get by Sundays, right? I, I sit in my workshop and I work on bases, okay? I'm working on bases. I always put Scott's live stream on, his live podcast and stuff, and I listen and I work and I contribute and I do this, and it's a brilliant time. It's really bad. It's really bad when it finishes, and I'm glad it overruns sometimes, Scott. You know, <laughs> I'm really glad about that because because um, when it when it goes off, it's all silent, and I have to put on background music, you know, which is kind of sucky. But Janet, what an artist this person is! Look at this, look at this, look, look. I'm going to show you. Look at that. That's our Facebook page, Janet Whitley Art, uh, Janet Whitley Art Official on Facebook. This is just stunning. Look at, the, I mean, what? Somebody drew that? Is, is this just, it's astounding to me. It really is. It's really astounding. Look at this. And she commissions art pieces. She, it, it's, oh. Look at the detail in the face there. See, I know what I'm looking at, Jan. Don't worry. <laughs> 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 
This is fantastic stuff. I'm really, really, really proud of this person. I really am. And the the most talented couple I know. So let's give a big cheer for Scott and Janet. And I hope you... Um, I'm going to put up their URLs there. Yep. I hope you uh, go visit them. It's worth it. Scott's the man. I'm not joking. This guy. Wow. He's such a talent. Wow. It's great. It's, it's just great to hear, you know. Um, I'm going to get serious now. If I wasn't already, you know. I'm all serious. Anyway, let's go into our Christopher Lee voice here and uh, let's go on with the, the show, shall we? Yes. Anyway, look, if you want to subscribe to my channel and get some of more of, of, of this lunacy, lunacy, then I wish I was better at this. I keep looking down at my stream deck to press laughs when I think something's funny. Maybe you don't think it's funny. I don't know. <laughs> That's fantastic. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, yeah right. Okay. Yeah. If you would like to uh, find out more about uh, what I do and everything else, then it's right here. So, if you like what we're doing here and you like the channel, why not subscribe to it on YouTube? It's absolutely free and you'll get all the latest updates and everything else. You know, the earth might depend upon it. Well, maybe not. Maybe not the earth. But that's what it's all about, you know, bringing this community together. Let's have some fun for a change, guys. Uh, no snideiness, no... Just let's, let's just go for it and let's have some fun. Um, having said that, I have... I don't know the limits of YouTube, but, I, you know, I'm streaming live. I didn't um, research certain things like... Uh, can I hook up an account to accept donations or super chats or stuff like that? You can try all that stuff if you like. Oh, uh, super chats and stuff like that. Oh, hi, Scott. Cheers. Oh, and Paul as well. Paul Busby. Thank you very much. Sorry, I need to have a break. Yeah, I need to get me more professional at this and say, I'm going to have an actual break right now to, to look at the chats. And... Um, <coughs> <laughs> Scott says, I missed a trick with the canned crowd. That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, that's really funny. You just get your stream deck, man, and put that into it. It's really, it's, it makes it really quite funny. I mean, I, I post-process those on, on certain videos, but um, it's good coming live. You know, you can go... Or you can go... So that's what makes it really funny, and it's 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 it makes it fun, you know. Um, yeah, who else? Who else is online here? This is fantastic. Yeah, David Milne. Yeah, love David. What a guy that is. Fellow Scott, of course, you know. And of course, Scott Whitley's mother is Scottish as well. So that's awesome, isn't it? Yeah, anyway, let's get back on track. I'm going to answer some questions later. Um, if my multitasking skills are up to the task. <laughs> I don't know. I actually plan to play later on as well. I mean, this is going to be really strange. I'm going off script so badly here. I don't have a script. What am I talking about? <laughs> anyway, look. Uh, if this is okay and it comes across very well, I would like to do several things. I would like to have um, guests on the show. I would like, you know, yeah, I'd like to have um, famous luthiers on the show primarily. Yeah, I'd also like to have um, players, bass players on the show, bass personalities on the show. 
uh, it would be fantastic for me. It, and it, it is for my edification. It really is. I mean, there's so much to learn and there's so many perspectives people have about bass playing and about the way you should go about it and about the nuances of it, about instruments, about everything like that. Especially in music, stuff like that. I plan to do um, DAW clinics, D-A-W, Digital Audio Workstation Clinics, which will be fantastic. And uh, I'm going to do it in software that's not available anymore. Yeah, I do plan to learn things like rapier and stuff. I have Cakewalk Sonar X1, which is about 10 years old, and it still works great for me because, uh, you know, uses VST plugins, uses uh, soft synths, you know, it, it does the whole lot for me. So, you know, why change right now? Well, you know, old guy, you know, have to get up to date. Um, look, the first episode here is a dip into the waters, okay? Um, but I really do want to touch on something that has been... Sorry, I had to reach over to do a special effect there, you know. <laughs> reach into something that has been playing my mind. <laughs> that didn't work, did it? That just did not work, right? Um, I'm going to take a break now and, and look at the chat. Yeah. The collective noun for group of basis, a disagreement. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, David. Uh, love the Scottish wit. Uh, more of it, please. Uh, that was fantastic. <laughs> Keep it coming, guys. Keep it coming. Uh, anyway, yeah. Here's the first topic I want to touch on. For real, actually. For real. Is... Uh, the construction of a, a, a stringed instrument, namely bass guitar, might be a guitar. We'll focus on bass here, right? Because this is, after all, a bass channel. Yeah, it's a bass channel. So, I'm going to sh be showing you three levels of construction of these instruments. The first is through neck through neck <laughs> neck through I don't like saying neck through because it sounds like necrophilia you know so I don't like saying that so I say through neck and a through neck is it's the neck and it goes all the way through there's no joint at the neck and the body of the guitar. A prime example of that is the, um, hmm, let's see if we can find one, shall we? Like, I haven't prepared this. <laughs> oh! <coughs> yeah, the Status Series 1000 by Washburn. Yes, it's a fantastic bass. I love this bass. This is my first gigging bass. I bought this back in 1987, okay? That's the Status Series 1000. And I'm going to turn it round so you can see what I'm talking about. Through, oh, big scratch. I need to repair that. Still got the serial number sticker on it and everything. <laughs> Although I can't read the serial number. It's all rubbed off and stuff, you know. But the sticker's still on there. But... As you can see, the neck blends into the body. And what's probably happened here is they've cut this piece of wood and they've slapped these outriggers onto it, these two wings onto it, you know. That goes all the way through the body. And the truss rod adjustment, if you know what that is, and I'll, I'll do something. Watch Scott's videos on, on truss rods. You know, he's better at it than me. And uh, see, that's where you adjust the truss rod. That's a through neck. This isn't graphite, though. I wish it was, but it's not. 
This was licensed by Rob Green to, to Washburn, I believe. But this is 35 years old, this base. Does not look it, does it? This has been through a lot, I'm telling you. This has been through the streets of Edinburgh, St Andrews, uh, Scott, Kirkcaldy. You know where Kirkcaldy is, man. Yeah, rough, you know. So, uh... <laughs> the next um, method of construction for uh, a bass guitar is the set neck. The set neck. <laughs> the neck set. Set neck. Right. So set neck is a glue in neck, like um, maybe a Gibson or something like that. You know, uh, Gibson were famous for doing this stuff. I'll show you an unusual set neck on a very famous bass. So. Hold on, wait a minute. I'm just going to get the bass right. Anybody recognize this? <laughs> it is a JD Supernatural Classic Series 1 Mark King model. Right? I uh, uh, had John Diggins build this one for me in 1999. Long time ago, right? That's a long time ago. Especially for young people who are... Uh, yeah, JD in the state is Dave. Thanks, man. Yeah. Took a long time to save up for that shit, I'll tell you. Anyway. <laughs> especially, especially, especially for a Scottish guy whose ass is tighter than a camel in a sandstorm. Yes. So, yeah, this is a set neck, a glue-in neck. And you can tell, I don't know if you can really see that on here. There's a scarf joint there. It's called a scarf joint. And... The neck sits in there and it's glued in. It's actually glued in. You can tell the slight join there. John did a great job of the lacquer on this, by the way. And I did get it refurbished. Well, I refurbished it myself a couple of years ago. I replaced... That's always needing replaced on a JD, anyway. I replaced this one and I asked John personally for the part and he gave me the part. And he's so sweet. I love that guy so much. Yeah, three cheers for John Diggins, please. Thanks. <laughs> right, I'm back. Um, the third method of construction of a neck, and I'm going to show you this on one of my own bases, the uh, Gas Base Scarab um, Series 1. <laughs> Thanks, David. Yeah, I'm going to take a break to look at comments in a minute. Um, the Gatsby Scarab Series 1 has a a bolt-on neck. And I have a, a, a great picture, uh, an example of a bolt-on neck. If I can just show you that. Uh, oh, no. That's the wrong picture. That's bolts on neck. Crap joke city tonight, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Here we are. This is the uh, Gas Base Scarab Series 2 Active Standard. I make a passive and active... Uh, oh, oh. Um, a version of this base. And as you can see, it's bolted on or screwed on actually um, sometimes I use uh, countersunk thread inserts sometimes I just screw it right into the wood because the wood's good enough if it's maple I'll screw it right into the wood cut threads as I'm doing so um, that's a standard beautiful base I'm going to be playing this one later on and I'll show you another example of a bolt on neck that I make Hold on, this is really getting hard work. I didn't think it was going to be this tough.
This is a uh, Gas Base Falcon Series 2. I have a Series 1 up on the wall somewhere. And you go, oh, by the way, see that? See that there? That's my YouTube channel. Awesome, right? Uh, plug. <laughs> um, yeah. And this is my purple bass, purple bass. I wish I could sing. I used to be able to sing. I used to do backing vocals and everything. But, yeah. Too much hard living, right? Yeah, so this is the um, uh, Gas Base Falcon Series 2. It's a headless model, as you can see there. Thrust rod. I'm in the middle of renovating this one. This uh, base was meant to be a demo for trade shows and stuff. There goes a spam call. I'm sorry, I have phones in every room, all right? Don't worry about it. Um... This was meant to be for trade shows. And it did get some playing. Then COVID hit and everything went to shit. Um, but after that, you know, during that, actually, I had people round and I was like, oh, here you go, pregnant bass. You know, I sounded like Bane. And let the games begin. So I gave them that and they smashed the hell out of it. Everyone smashed the hell out of it. So I've been refurbishing it. There's only one thing I can't refurbish. I don't know if you can see that. Is I can't chrome plate at the moment. There's a little chip out of the chrome there. But it still plays fantastic. And I'm going to demo it for you uh, later on if time permits. Uh, we're already half an hour into this, you know. I feel like doing this. You know, I feel like going to... Uh but I won't. I won't do that to you. I won't. I, I won't. I won't. I, I, I won't. I won't do it. I just, I just won't do it. So, there it is. And this was LEDs in the neck. Purple. Purple. LEDs in the neck, you know. So, this is very good. How to do that? Well, for a simple LED circuit, I, I use uh, springs in the heel of the neck here, when this screws on, you know, we get contact with the electronics in the body that I designed, with the LED drivers, all that stuff. Uh, and that works great, the screw on. And if you just sort of lose contact, you can take the neck off this, right? You can take the neck off it. You can take it out, polish up the spring contacts, and get the connection again. Nice. Nice neck plate, right? Yeah. Awesome. See, that's because I'm murking. I'm murking now. I'm murking. So that's the difference. Is, I mean, really, um, the reason I go for bolt on necks is because there's two reasons, right? One is I always remember Leo Fender. Okay, Leo Fender, the man, the man, without doubt, a frickin' genius, always said a good quality musical instrument should always be easily repairable. So I kind of took that to heart and that's the way I designed it. I can take the neck off this and work on it separately from the body. If I have a through neck, or a, through neck sorry, or a set neck, I can't do that as easily. I have to have a huge jig, and I've got a small shop. You know, if I had a huge shop like uh, Vinny Fadera or something like that, who's awesome, by the way. You should watch Vinny's videos on YouTube. They're fantastic. Then it wouldn't be much of a problem, but the thing is, if you do take your guitar in for repair, you're going to pay a little more for the inconvenience of a guitar having a through neck or a, 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 a you know a through neck or a set neck, um, bolt ons are the best for maintenance. There's no worries. I'm going to take a little break now and have a look at the questions. David says, "Any gas bases in Scotland yet?" Uh, no, unless my mum wants to buy one. <laughs> there are there are ones in France. 
Belgium, Italy, Spain. I think that's it in Europe. Uh, there's one in South America and the rest are across here. So thanks for the question, man. That's awesome. <laughs> Paul Busby says, some singer lol. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> Used to be. Not now, though. You know, and that's life, though. It's hard. Scott, uh, Scott Whitley is saying to me, makes so much sense. I like the thump of bolt-on basses more as it happens. Yes, I totally agree with that, Scott. I really do. And there's so much things you can do with a bolt-on neck if the wood breathes over time. There's certain, wood is porous. It's a living, it, well, it was a living thing. It's porous material. You can put varnish or filler or sealer and all you like onto this. It's going to be affected by climate. The good thing about bolt-ons is that you can adjust them much quicker. I had to let my, I live in Florida, by the way, in Delray Beach, Florida, which is a cool place. Yes, it is. Don't believe everyone else. And um, yeah, it gets very hot here and humid. And we have a modicum of humidity control that we can sort of store the bases on the wall here. I'm in a humidity control room. You have to be very careful, though. It took the JD when I took it back from the UK to uh, United States here, Florida. It had a hard time. I had to slacken off the truss rod completely before it seasoned itself. It got seasoned and straightened up again. That took six months. So, and that's a top quality base. So you have to be careful about these things. Um... It, it makes a lot of sense to do so. Yeah, so, guys, thanks for all the comments right now. Uh, I'm going to go on to something else, which I would like to um, sort of demonstrate a couple of the models that I have uh, on offer here. Now, this is not going to be the usual format of this uh, live stream. If it's very successful, then I won't do it again. <laughs> Uh, if it's if it becomes popular, I I will be inviting guests on and stuff like that. Um, you know, generally we'll have more features, uh, like looking into different manufacturers that I like, other manufacturers I don't like. Uh, I think people who subscribe to my channel know who I don't like. But I'm not going to say anything right now. It's a live stream. I'm a nice guy. I really am. And, uh, you know, uh, other things like that. We'll explore music competition, stuff like that. But like I said, if you want to learn something about bass, go here to Scott Whitley's bass page. You know, that's where you go. Go right here. If you want to learn anything about bass guitar and playing bass guitar, go to Scott. He's the man... He will t put you on the right track, clear, concise, simple, straightforward, easy to understand, one of the best communicators I've ever met. So, please, visit Scott. <laughs> Sorry, you saw my script there, didn't you? Which, <laughs> there's nothing of it. You know, I'm winging this as I go. You know. uh, this is a dip into the waters, of course, for me. So... Let's fill up 20 minutes, shall we? Yeah, now I've got plenty more to say. Uh, I just don't want to say it all at once. And I want to give you a little demo of um, what I've got here. Now, what I do have is an effects chain. You're not going to be able to see it. It's at my feet. Um, I have certain effects, and I don't have a camera at my feet right now. Who the hell would want to look at my feet anyway with my... With my, do you want to see my baffies? Do you want to see? That's my baffies, right? You don't want to see those hitting effects pedals, right? But I can show you something. I'll explain what I have. From the bass going through to the desk, in the middle I have a Joyo 12-band equaliser, 
which I rarely use, actually. Uh, such are the quality of the preamps that I make for my basses. <laughs> then in the middle, I have um, something called a Boss GT1B multi-effects pedal, which has the learning curve of El Capitan. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to learn. I do have, I did have a Digitech, I'll show you the Digitech. Oh, sorry about that, I should have put the intermission screen on there. That's the Digitech I've got. I've had that for maybe 20 years, maybe. But uh, when you switch it on, it goes <laughs> and it's not meant to be an effect. <laughs> and then at the end of the chain, I have a, a, a Boss um, RC20XL loop pedal, which does more than just looping. It's, it's fantastic. Let me put this stuff on. Let's see what we can get going. Um, uh, you're going to have to excuse me. I'm going to take my headphones off, put my bass on, and then put my headphones back on. Because I just hate it when I get tied down to this damn cable, you know. So. Back in a minute. <laughs> Straighten the specs. <laughs> I'm glad they've got um, hinges on them, you know. Is that too loud? Let me know if that mix is too loud. How's that sound? Is that sounding okay, guys? Just let me know, because... It sounds a bit loud to me, and I've got a lot of digital noise. I don't know where that's coming from. I might have to get my um, deoxy it out. Oh. This stuff for electrical contacts. Is that sound okay? What video stuff? Hey Scott, what video stuff are you using? To scream OBS, Scott. OBS and I might go through Restream.io later on if things pick up and I can stream to multiple sources. Um, that would be awesome. If I if we ever meet up and you want me on your stream, then I know you use Restream, so you send me a, a guest link and I would be on. I do the same for you. We would have a ball. I'm not joking. We would have a real ball. I'm not joking. <laughs> Um, since <laughs> thanks, David. I'm not going to repeat that. You're too kind. You're too kind. Too kind. So that sounds good. Thanks, Phil. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is the um, Gatsby Scarab Series Two standard that comes with the maple neck and the maple fingerboard. This wood is Sapelli and uh, dual coloured, uh, finished in a polyurethane coat, and uh, let's do a simple thing that I saw on Rock School once, I don't know if you remember Rock School, Scott, you might remember this, it was a show on the BBC, maybe BBC Two, it was an educational show called Rock School, and they had Larry Graham on once. On Rock School, I think it was 1982 or 83, I can't remember. I was very young. Well, I wasn't actually, I was nearly 16 at that time. Oh my God, shown me age. Yeah, so what I heard was this, and I put this into my Boss RC20XL using, uh, I just went... <laughs> to try and emulate a guitar riff. So here's what I put in. Here comes the 
comes the bass, here it comes. Yeah, I love that. That's actually the piece that really turned me on to slap. Really turned me on to slap. There was, uh, in fact, when I got my first bass, um, I started playing the instruments when I was four years old, but I couldn't get my own, that's a different story that I'll tell later, but my own bass came when I was 13, and it was a K bass for 60 pounds out of a shop in Kirkcaldy, Fife, just north of Dunfermline, Scott, um, in Scotland, uh, from a shop called Sound Control, which is at the top of a big hill that went down to the beach, or what is <laughs> commonly known as a beach in Scotland. <laughs> yes. uh, rock rubble pile, I would say, maybe. And uh, it was a K bass, it was 60 pounds, and the first slap bass line I learned was, I think it was this. <laughs> Does anyone know what that is? Yes, Scott. It was the yellow red sunburst short scale K bass and it fell apart within a year. It was awesome. So does anyone know uh Yeah, sound control. David remembers it. Good for you, my friend. Good for you. That's awesome. Well done. Yeah. Nobody know that bass line. It was uh, Adam Clayton, a bass line from um, U2, Gloria. Uh, I bought the album October in 1981, and that was the one of the first lines I wanted to play. But I played it. I played it like this because I didn't know how to slap, you know. Just turned the reverb off that because it's doing my nothing, you know. Hope oh, that sounds okay. I want to move on to uh, showing you a bit of DAW work now. Um, hold on, I'm going to answer some questions here. <laughs> Nice one, Scott. A lot of people thought it was Tony Butler, which amused the big country boys to create like, yeah. <laughs> Nice, nice. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, let's not talk about that <laughs> this time. <laughs> That's funny, though. Um, <coughs> sorry. Um, yeah. So, I'm going to go ahead and play some stuff. Yeah, I remember Rock School. Yeah, it's fantastic. It was really good, actually. I liked that show, Rock School. They never did anything else after that stuff, which is really a shame. You know, it didn't give anyone any bearing on anything. I'm sorry about this digital noise that keeps coming in. I'm going to have to deoxy all my cables and stuff. <laughs> Let's go to the door, which is Cakewalk Sonar X1, as you just said. And I've been working on a little tune that I would like to actually just just put out there. 
I really don't care. It, it's jaunty, it's crazy, it's stupid. A bit like myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I do agree with your segment at all. I, I, I don't, I, I don't agree with it. I, I don't. Anyway, here's the, here it is without um, bass guitar. Have a listen. It's just a little segment. Please, it's not boring at all. It really isn't. Please don't go away from me. Sorry, that was my first fuck up, right? Oops, YouTube strike. <laughs> yeah, that was my first screw up there. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot to unmute the mic. Yeah, see, I, that's what I told you about multitasking, but us guys are hopeless at it. Yeah. So that's quite a jaunty little tune. You know, uh, swing beat to it. 145 beats per minute in there. And I was wondering what I could put to that. And uh, as you know, I just like to slap the crap out of the bass. So I thought something along the lines of, if I can get back from here. Something like that, you know, just to play along with. So let's go and let's go and try that. Let's go and overlay that on the track that we've already got. And I will turn on the side camera here. Actually, I forgot to do. I forgot to do this, which is really, really funny. You know, you start off like that, and you go, and then you go, and then you go. Always wanted to do that. Harry Enfield is my hero. Anyway, <laughs> let's uh, let's get back to the business in hand, shall we? <laughs> okay, let's go. not quite there yet, but that was one of the ideas I had. If anyone else has any ideas on that track, I would be really glad to hear. You know, I think it's got a great uh, swing beat, and the bit I like best about it is I labour I labour that B there on the G. On the G string, the B that I'm playing. Um, I think I'll play that for you. That ring, you know, it's uh, oh no, 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 come on, come on, god, that's a bit e egotistical, that isn't it? Uh, you know, 
No. So, you know, that's what I like most about that part. And, uh, of course, in future episodes, we're going to go through DAW setup and stuff for bass. I'll go through some piano. Uh, I think I can give you a shot of the MIDI surface that I have here. There's piano, of course. I'm just go in there. Sorry, Toddle and Dean. Eh, showing my age again there. <laughs> so, you know, we're going to go through all these things and do such good stuff with live stuff. I'm going to, I might have guests on and stuff like that. We can shoot the breeze and, and be uh, very proactive in this community. I think it's a new, a new beginning for a lot of people uh, over the last week. Um... I've recently had a bereavement in my family. I promised myself I wouldn't talk about this. Yet, here I am. Um, my father died about a month ago. And I'm very upset about that. Uh, but things get better. They really do. Um, there are people out there that really, really care. And those are the people who matter the most. Look... The future runs uncertain, and that is because of the leaders that we either chose or were forced upon us. We can choose to lay down to that, or we can choose to do what we want to do in the name of freedom and liberty. So, anyway, enough politics. This is not a political show, okay? think that's about it guys um i'm gonna have a look at the chat and see what we've got here yeah funkin great i love funk scott man me and you shit anyway <laughs> awesome <laughs> um paul thank you very much for sticking around david Mill, thank you very much janet love you man love you loads Keep doing that great artwork. It's the best. It's the best I've ever seen. I'm not joking. Pat. Patrick. Hi. How you doing, man? Uh, thank you very much uh, for your condolences. It's much appreciated. It's been a very hard time recently. Um, we'll get through it. We will get through it. And uh, let's start building a networked community that can actually do something in this world. And I'll leave it at that, okay? Until next time. Guys, if you've enjoyed this, please subscribe to the channel. Let me know. Uh, let me know what you think of the quality of the stream. The, uh, just the technical parts, you know. I'll, I'll shape everything up. <laughs> everything else up later, okay? You know, first time. So, just let me know what you think. Leave your comments, even after the live show. I'm going to put some more details in there. 
And uh, I want you all to take care. Stay safe. Be good. And, you know, I'll catch you next time. Hopefully, there's going to be another live stream next Saturday. And I hope you can join me. And thank you very much for your attention. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you.